Hey, welcome to a short video here in Onshape where we are going to look at using the um, planes tools just to create planes that are not already in your graphic window or ones that you can reference. So we obviously get these origin planes, the front, the top, the right to begin with, but you are not always going to want to stick with those. And I'm, I'm just going to start with this. Um, up here you've got the plane tool. This is in a drop down with a lot of other tools. So potentially you've got um, another tool displaying here. You may have to go look for it. But we've got the plane tool. And when you open that up, you're going to have another drop down that allows you to choose from one of these. And we're going to work through all of them kind of as fast as I can just to show you the real quick basics. So the offset plane is going to create a parallel plane offset some specified distance from the plane you, you pick. So um, if I created uh, another horizontal plane, but not you know, at the origin, and let's say I want it to be higher, I can choose that top plane, that horizontal plane, I can specify the exact distance I want, and I get a second plane, just like that. All right, the next one is the plane and point tool. Um, this one is going to use a plane to be parallel tool, but instead of specifying a distance to offset, you're going to go through a sp specific point. So in order to have another point, I'm going to have to go ahead and create a sketch. I'm going to put a sketch in. Let's go on the front plane. And let's just add a, I'll go ahead and make a line actually. Um, just to reference. So there's a sketch with a line, and that's in my front plane. So now with the plane tool, if I'm on plane and point, so let's say I want a horizontal plane again. I'm going to pick that top plane. I'll be parallel to that, and then I can specify a point. I've got, a, I guess, a few points I can choose. I can choose the midpoint there. Let's go ahead and do that. That might be fun. And it's going to create a plane parallel to that and through that point, just like that. All right, next up is the line angle. OK, you need a line to be able to create this one, which I do. I just create a line, so I'm going to choose a line angle. And now I'm going to specify a line. It's got to live in a sketch somewhere. And um, think of the line as like a hin you know, hinges on a door that are collinear, those hinges. Um, and that door can, can pivot and rotate on the, around that, those, that axis that runs through those hinges. So me specifying the line is kind of picking the uh, line of rotation, which I can kind of rotate a potential plane around like that. And so that is just another way to specify where in space you might have a plane. And it's giving me a message I could create more geometry to um, reference where that angle measurement was coming from, where I could specify a measurement. Oh, excuse my audio. Okay. The next one is choosing a point and then choosing a it'd be a line to be perpendicular to. So let's go ahead and use this line again. Um, and so I'm going to pick the line. And the plane that gets created is going to be perpendicular to that line in all directions. And then the point that I select is going to be um, a point that the plane contains. So I'll choose one of these endpoints. How about this one right here? There you go. So it creates a plane that contains that point, and then this plane that I just selected or created right there is perpendicular to that line. Okay. Now I'm starting to get a whole bunch of planes, you know, and that gets a little messy. But hopefully you're getting the idea of how to use these tools. All right. What's next? All right. The three-point plane is, is exactly what it sounds like. Oh, excuse me. You're going to pick three points in space and um, it takes three non-collinear points this is a geometry concept three non-collinear points to create or specify a um, unique plane in space so let's go ahead and how about let's start a sketch on this plane for fun and get another point kind of way out here and then we've got multiple points I can work with and so let's turn that tool on and I'm going to choose that as one of my points. I'm going to choose um, this as another point. And then how about I choose the origin is also a point I can choose. 
And there you go. A plane has been created such that that plane passes and contains those three points. All right. Do we have one left? Nope, two left. Okay, mid plane. Let's go ahead and hide some of these. We're getting so much stuff going on. Um, okay. All right, so mid plane is going to, you're going to select two surfaces, and they do not have to be parallel planes. Um, and it's going to find the kind of the average of those two. So um, I'm going to go ahead and choose the front and the right and show you that it tries to average and, and it splits right here. And you may think, well, wait a minute, I wanted to go this way right here. Well, you can um, flip alignment. I think that's going to do it. Yep, flip alignment. Um, will show a different possibility if, the, if there was a different possibility to average or find the midpoint of those two, kind of the midplane of those two. Um, hit, clicking flip normal is going to kind of change where the front of that plane is. You'll see the text there, plane kind of flipping around. Okay, um, so there's that. Uh, maybe let me uh, where did I create I created an offset plane didn't I? at the very beginning. Go ahead and turn that one on. Yep, that one was uh, parallel to that top. So let's choose the mid plane one more time, and just kind of choose two horizontal planes, like that one plane two and this one right here. And um, now that's not supposed to be going to that point, and it, it doesn't. It kind of looked like it might be, but it's not. Um, in this case, uh, flipping alignment, I don't think it's going to really do anything. It's it, they're already parallel planes. Um, the mid plane, there's only one possible location for that. So you see how that looks. Okay, um, we'll leave that in a big deal. And we've got one last one. Now the last one is kind of like the point normal. We created a plane that was a normal or perpendicular to a line and through a point, but it's called, um, uh, what's it called? Point curve or normal curve? Let's see, uh, I forget the name. Curve point. Okay, so let's create a curve get a sketch. And I'm just going to use the spline tool here real quick. If you haven't played around with the spline tool, the spline tool kind of fits a curve as you create more points. And when you're done, you can double click. Now along that, I kind of snaked that all over, I have a whole bunch of points. So I'm going to accept that sketch. What I can do is I can get a plane to be perpendicular in all directions to this curve at the point I specify and then to pass through or contain the point I specify. So let's go ahead and maybe we'll do a couple of these. Um, I'm going to choose the curve and then I can choose a point on the curve and I will get a plane created okay, that passes through or contains that point and is exactly perpendicular to that curve. So a curve at any exact point okay, um, it, it, at that exact point, it's got kind of a direction that's traveling in space. You could say, um, you know, the, the line that would be tangent to this curve at that point, that line would have like a slope. And so, um, you know, you can think of a curve as being made up of lots and lots of little lines, you know, kind of constantly changing angle. So at that point, what direction would that curve or the line be heading? And we're going to be perpendicular to it. Hopefully that makes sense. And let's go ahead and make another one at least, and we'll kind of be done. So maybe um, often it might make sense to do it at the end. So pick this curve and kind of go right at that end point. Oop, I double click, so I selected and deselected at the same time. Um, why is that helpful at the end? Because often that might be where you put, okay, a profile. Let's do an ellipse instead of. Okay, that might be where you have a profile at the end of this curve that is going to um, be swept. If you know the sweep tool yet, that's going to be swept. Uh, faces and sketch regions, let's choose that face. And then sweep path here. And it doesn't like that. It could be the size of that profile or the... Um, I don't think this thing's curving too tightly, but it could be... Um, let me go in here and modify my ellipse and make it a little smaller and see if that helps you 
helps it generate. Yep, it did. So I think my profile was just too big relative to the path and the geometry that I had that it was going to kind of intersect itself or you know have some problems. But um, that's why um, in a common use is just creating a plane kind of perpendicular to your path right at the beginning or the end of that path and then you could do your sweep. So I hope this video, um, while not super short, um, is thorough enough to help you kind of start playing around with and using these work planes, kind of creating planes in space that you did not already have. Good luck.